Magandang umaga po sa lahat. So, uh, pagkatapos ng exhaustive at exhausting na ocular inspection na iyan, eh, kung kami na taga-Senado ay na-exhaust, isipin natin yung hirap at exhaustion na nagbunga nito ng ating mga law enforcement authorities at higit sa lahat, isipin natin yung exhaustion na mukhang mahabang taong ng paghihirap ng mga binibiktima sa ganitong klase ng mga lugar. After that, mind-blowing, eye-opening ocular inspection, I call this meeting to order and wish to formally acknowledge my fellow Senator Sherwin Gatchalian. Thank you, Sen, for joining from, from the very start of this morning. 2020 pa lang po, pinasok na ng opisina ko ang usapin ng human trafficking at ang mga pogo hubs. Ang naging pangunahing usapin ay ang pambibiktima nga sa mga kababaihan at kabataan na mga pogo hub na ito. At bagamat madami nang naging ugat at daloy ang investigasyon mula pastillas hanggang pogo, hanggang scam hub, may investigasyon din uh, ang komite na chine-chair ni Sen. Sherwin at ilan pa namin mga kasama Babalik at babalik din pala sa original sin ang pag-aabuso sa kababaihan. Truly, trafficking is gendered. And women are always and forever disproportionately impacted when predators and syndicates visit crime and abuse upon economically vulnerable populations. And we hear Just a couple of these accounts from two survivors of sex trafficking during this hearing. Hindi po napigilan yung alos pagluha namin no? nung nakita yung aquarium kung saan ginagawang putahe ang mga babae at ang mga kwarto. Napakaraming. So, ipakinggan muna natin yung video uh, testimonies ng dalawa sa mga biktima ito. Tapos, o pumunta ka doon, so ka lang nila i-breaking sa'yo na may ganun po. So, yun po, meron pong KTV, tapos may mga sex room po sila doon, babayaran ka nila para makipagkalip po. Depende po, may oras-oras po kasi. Uh, meron pong nag-KTV, pag sinabi po yung second floor is yun na po yung sex room. Yun po, yung 30 minutes po kasi tawag nila doon, 1P, 2P kapag 1 hour, 3P kapag 6 hours lang po. One day po is parang one pop, isang po po, kumbaga. Uh, sa amin po kasi nagiging bigay sa amin dyan is 3,000. Ang binabayad po ni guys, 10,000. Yung 2P, 18K po, tapos sa amin na pupunta is 5,500. Tapos yung 3P naman po is 28,000, binabayad ni guys. Tapos sa amin is 9. Uh, may tapos ka, Chinese na po. Gusto ko na lang din mahuli yung mga boss. Kasi parang ang sarap ng buhay nila dun sa labas eh. Kami yung nagsasakripisyo dito. Nakakatroma na. Kasi kahit anong pilit po namin maging matapang dito sa loob, wala po eh. Binigil, binigil kami. Ako po pinipilit ko kumalma. Every time, parang hindi ko na nga po kotakin yung pamilya ko eh. Kasi ayoko nag-iisip na sila na, okay ka lang ba dyan? Anong kalagayan mo dyan? Ano, ayoko na po silang kinakausap. Kasi po, nag-aalala lang sila sa akin. So na lang din namin patapos. Via Telegram po. Sa Telegram po kasi, marami po kami GC dyan. Random girls. nakita ko siya usually for Facebook account. Um, ang dami account yung gamit niya. Siya ba, nakita lang siya na ako kasi ang nakalagay doon. Pasay, tapos a boulder, office top, housekeeping. Tapos, nag-comment ako sa kanya na still hiring. Nag-comment ako doon sa pinaka-post niya na still available. 
Ano po pinyo niya sa akin? Ang tanong niya sa akin? Do you have pen drop? Sinabi ko, mayroon. Sabi namin, mag-send ka kayo na kayo. Sa kayo, through PF. Ako sabi ko, mamang gusto ko ang phone. Gusto ko mag-try. Gusto ko mag-apply. So paki-note lang po no, parehong babae yung pinakinggan namin. Natin pinalitan lang po namin yung boses para mas hindi makilala. So kanina doon sa ocular namin natin sa pinagtrabahuan nila at marami pa eh halos hindi mo talaga uh, mapipilita na muntik maluluha no? Lalo na pag nung pinasok natin at nakita yung aquarium kung saan ginagawang putahe yung mga babae nakaupo doon hanggang anim na po sa kanila at pinagsusuot ng mga number at yung mga kwarto kung saan ginagawa silang para usan ng mga empleyado at boss ng Pogo. Gaya nyo po, nasyak din ako sa nakita nating torture chamber kung saan ginagapos ang mga empleyado ng smart web. Walang ilaw, walang pagkain, pasa-pasa, at bugbog, bugbog ang sinapit ng mga biktima ng mga mapangahas at abusadong employer na ito. The walls are, at nakita po natin, they are literally bloodstained. Nag-brown na lang yung dati ay pula. Bloodstained. At yung mga marka ng mga paa na nakatapak dun sa dingding, kita pa rin. Bloodstained. And those blood stains tell the stories of anguish and suffering, the torture inflicted on the prisoners of that room. At pagkatapos po, sa pagdaos nitong ating hearing, gusto ko rin pong siya sa atin itong nakakabahala na nagmumukhang cottage industry ng paggawa ng peke at fraudulently obtained na mga PIN ID PhilHealth ID, pati Alien Certificate of Registration, at iba pa, na di umano, nagiging daan pa nila para sila'y maging legal na residente dito sa Pilipinas. O baka mas malala, magkaroon ng Philippine Passport. Now, given the spate of crimes, including kidnapping, na paulit-ulit na lang nababalita sa news, and equally important, Our current dispute in the West Philippine Sea, it is alarming that we are giving an all-access pass to Chinese citizens through these BOGO hubs. This is really a problem when our supposed regulators are both regulatory and revenue-generating mandates. Now, when these mandates conflict, which one suffers? When income generation is prioritized over social impact, who suffers? At hindi na ito hypothetical, kundi kitang-kita ng dalawang mata natin ang pangkasalukuyan nating realidad. Public safety and national security suffer. So I'll keep this short because there's so much to unpack indeed. 
before I call on our committee secretary to acknowledge the resource persons and administer the oath to those who haven't taken their oath, may I ask my colleague, Senator Sherman, if you also have an opening statement. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. Pagtapos nating umikot, Madam Chairperson, kampante po akong sabihin na tayo na ang naging human trafficking hub ng buong mundo. Human slavery hub ng buong mundo. Hindi lang kasama ko yun, may sex den at mayroon pang torture chamber. At uh, nasabi ko nga ko kanina na hindi ko magagawa to ng mga ordinaryong kriminal. Ito ay ginagawa ng isang organized, malakas ang loob, at well-connected na mga criminal syndicates. Nandito na ho sila sa Pilipinas. Nag-ooperate, napakalakas sa loob, katabi lang ang DFA, katabi lang ang isang police station, napakalapit sa Senado, pero alam nila yung gagawin nila, may pera sila para gawin, at may sitmura sila para gawing sex slaves yung mga kababayan namin. At um, ito ay nangyari dahil nagtatago sila sa likod ng isang legitimate license BOGO operator. Kaya makikita ko natin, Madam Chairperson, there is a failure of regulation. At dahil may failure of regulation, tayo na ngayon ang binibiktima nitong mga sindikatong ito. Kahapon nagbabasa po ako ng economist at uh, lumabas sa economist na ating bansa ay may ganitong sex slavery, human trafficking dahil sa Pogo. At marami ng bansa binand na ang Pogo. Tayo na lang ang natitira. At nakikita natin dahil tayo na lang natitira, dito nagpuntahan yung mga sindikato at binibiktima. Hindi lang mga ibang lahi kundi sarili na nating mga kababayan. Ang kinakatakotan ko, Madam Chair, lalala at lalala ito, lalalim at lalalim ito, at mas maraming pa tayong mga kababayan na mabibiktima. Kaya nagpapasalamat po ako sa ating uh, Madam Chair at uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng ganitong hearing para lalo na maitulak na tuldukan na ang pogo sa ating bansa dahil walang kabutihan na itinudulot to para sa atin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Wynn. Ngayon, Komse, paki-acknowledge ang ating resource persons at i-administer yung oath sa hindi pa nakaka-oath. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, for the record, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of the following resource person. From the uh, Interagency Council Against Trafficking, we have uh, Yusek Nicholas Felix T. And uh, Attorney Maria Lara Dom Dominic Sanchez. From the... National Interagency Task Force Against Trafficking, we have uh, the Provincial Prosecutor, Raymond Jonathan Liedo. Then from the Department of Justice, we have Assistant State Prosecutor, Honey Rose Delgado. Then uh, from the NAIA Task Force Against Trafficking, we have Senior Assistant State Prosecutor, Jinke de Dumo. Then from the National Bureau of Investigation, from the Anti-Human Trafficking Division, we have Attorney Dennis Victor Asistio, Attorney John Mark Santiago. From the National Bureau of Investigation Anti-Graft Division, also Attorney Olga Agustia Gonzalez. Uh, from the Bureau of Immigration, we have, the, uh, we have Attorney Arvin Cesar Santos, Attorney Jose Carlitos Licas, Mr. Fortunato Manahan, Attorney Homer Arellano. <coughs> From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have the Special Assist, uh, we have Director Lailani Feliciano. From the, uh, and uh, Special Project Officer Noreen Montoya. From the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have ASEC Irene Dumlao. Then from the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney Angela Aliman. From the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, we have Retired General Raul Villanueva. The Assistant Vice President for Offshore Gaming Licensing Department, we have Attorney Jessa Maris Fernandez. From the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission, we have Yusek Gilberto Cruz. 
from the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission, we have Colonel Angel Madarang. From the Philippine National Police, we have the Deputy Director of Police, Brigadier General Rodolfo Castile, Jr. Then we have the Director for Southern Police District, we have Police Brigadier General Mark Vispias. We also have the Acting Chief of the PNP Women and Children Protection Center, we have Police Colonel Portia B. Manalad. From the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, we have uh, Claire Elaine Policarpio. Then from the Anti-Money Laundering Council, we have Attorney Adrian Arpon. We have Attorney Romel Trichu. We, are also have with, uh, we also have uh, the Barangay Chairman of Barangay 13, Pasay City, Chairman Eduardo Cruz. Then from the Manila International Airport Authority, we have uh, Brigadier General Manuel Gonzalez. Then we have the Assistant General Manager for Operation, Mr. Rafael Regular. That's all for now, Madam Chair. Uh, may I? And then from Clark Iacat, we also have uh, Ramoncito Ocampo, Jr. and uh, Maria Clara de la Cruz. May I request those who were not able to take their oath during our uh, previous hearing to please stand up? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, please take your name. Do solemnly swear that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to this committee. Thank you. You may now take your seat. Thank you, Comsec, and sa mga resource persons. So, in a little bit, uh, I'll give the floor to Iyakat to make a presentation on this rate. And I really hope that aside from providing details about this specific operation, Iyakat also helps us by providing answers to the following questions. First, how this particular operation helps in our overall understanding of the scam hub phenomenon. What patterns are reinforced and what new trends are emerging? Second, what challenges are faced by our law enforcement agencies? There's IACAT, there's um, the Women and Children Protection uh, Unit, and of course the PAOC uh, and others. And third, what are the policy gaps that IACAT has managed to identify, and how can we strengthen our existing laws to address these gaps. But just before that, I'd like to first ask quickly a few questions on the fake IDs. Dahil ito yung lumabas sa balita nung isang gabi, and talagang aghast, aghast ang sino mang nakapanood noon. Uh, tanong ko lang po si uh, Yusef uh, Cruz ng PAOC. Just to clarify, sir, ito pong mga IDs na ito, ito po, kitang-kita po natin, Ah, uh, uh, may, may Dole ID, may PhilHealth ID, uh, Teen ID mula sa BIR, Alien Certificate ID, Police Clearance ID. Oh, galing sa Pasay City Police Station, di umano. Uh, are they fake, Yusek? Ibig sabihin, bogus ba to? Unauthorized manufacture ba ang mga ito? O mga totoong ID na galing? doon sa government agency na ang mandato ay i-provide ito sa mga totoong mamamayan o kaya dayuha na dapat lamang makatanggap dito. Halimbawa, yung pong BIR ID, pwede ba natin i-flash ulit yun? Na-check na po ba ito sa BIR? Uh, uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, from our initial verification made with the commissioner of the BIR, uh, and then personally, ma'am, uh, chinek niya po yung mga BIR IDs kasi ma'am, nung pumunta po kami ron, uh, we have uh, yung mga IDs na ito. And chinek po nila with their system, their database system. And uh, nagulat po sila nung malaman nila na nakapasok po sa sistema nila itong mga IDs na ito. So, so uh, authentic po. So, authentic IDs ang mga ito? Yes, ma'am. Na na-recover sa mga Pogo Hubs? Yes, ma'am. So, since if and since the IDs are real, it must mean, eh, ba't sila nagulat? May mga tao na nag apply talaga sa mga ahensyang ito. So, 
Alam po ba ninyo, Yusek, if they actually appeared before the BIR? Alam ba ng BIR yon? Uh, part po ng investigation, but uh, ang tinitignan po kasi namin dito, uh, normally ma'am talaga pag nag apply ka personal eh. For, for uh, the agency to uh, take pictures and then the signatures, but uh, ang nakakagulat lang dito, uh, even the field health ma'am is nakadikit-dikit pa yung ideal. So ibig sabihin ma'am, talagang uh, big sir ang kausap nila dito. So, uh, nag-appear ba sila sa PhilHealth or yung fixer lang ang nag-fix para sa kanila? Ang sa tingin ko mga fixer na lang po. Eh, opo, fixer. Tingin din po namin ay fixer. I have seen me here yung mga IDs. Ayan, mga, wow. Uh, Bag-bag ng mga uh, we, IDs. We have here the BIR ID, ma'am. Uh, eto ma'am yung Dole. Eto marami yan, ma'am. And then, uh, the pill health ID. Baka mamaya, Yusek, may national ID pa yan. Yung national ID na kahit ako at kami sa office ko, ilang taon nang iniintay. Baka mauna pa itong mga pogo uh, criminals na to. And pa para lang sa kaalaman nating lahat, the committee sent an invitation to the BIR to join us in today's hearing. Ni wala pong reply. Ito po, hawak po namin Dole uh, Alien Employment Permit Authentic din daw, send sure win BIR oh. May team number si Zhao Heng So, lo, lo abiding pala Nagbabayad daw ng buwis Kaya Kasi, kung ganun po, no, na may mga fixer Uh, hindi talagang nag apply yung mga tao ito. Hindi nag appear sa harap ng mga ahensya natin. Tulad nating mga bawat Pilipino na nag appear the problems discussed during the previous hearings in which the identities of the Sun Valley survivors couldn't be confirmed because of the lost passports. At least pwedeng, pwedeng ma-resolve. Gamitin na natin yung sarili nilang paper trail, sarili nilang uh, ID trail para, para doon. I think nandito po yung taga PhilHealth. Nakita ko dalawa banda rito sa kanan. Tama po ba? So, ma'am, uh, uh, bakit po ganito? Bakit may mga legitimate na cards na binibigay sa illegitimate na paraan? May fixer ba na nagpapadala na lang ng rubber band bound IDs padala dito sa Pogo Hubs? Uh, mapapatanong talaga kami, may pastillas din ba sa loob ng ahensya? Uh, current, uh, uh, good morning po. Yes, uh, good morning. Please proceed. Dr. Bernadette Lico. Um, currently po, sa database po namin, nakaregister po sila. Meron silang feel, uh, feel health employers number. Ang ginamit po nila sa pag-transact sa amin is through the online po, using the central business portal ng SEC. And uh, wala pa pong mga hard copy ng mga uh, documents nila sa amin kasi currently, nag-apply pa lang po sila through online August 2023. And based on database po namin, wala pa po silang contribution at wala pong nakalista na mga employees. So, yung mga ID po na nandyan, most probably po mga fake po yan. Pero we have to still verify po. Hindi po namin uh, masasabi na totoong fake siya. Kasi makikita po namin yan using the mic. Meron po kami tinatawag na Feel health ID number. So, yung number po, may series number yon, Mababalidate po namin siya. Pag wala ko kaming copy, hindi po namin matche-check. So, iisa-isahin po namin yan kung fake yan. Pero uh, currently po, meron silang Feel health employer number. So, nakaregister sila sa database ng Feel health without contribution pa po sa kawala pa kong actual na hard copy ng mga documents nila. Kasi, August pa lang po sila nag -apply. And take note po, ma'am, August sila nag-apply. And I think later we will hear from uh, Iyakat uh, na August was an important date for this particular company. Uh, August was an important date sa kanilang patuloy na pagtakas sa ating mga otoridad para patuloy nilang mabiktima yung mga tao sa, sa ganitong paraan. So yes, please do uh, verify the authenticity or the fakeness of these IDs tulad ng ginawa po ng BIR. Yung employer po na nag-turn sa PhilHealth Online ay yung 
smart web pa rin po ba? Yes po. Sa base sa database po namin, Smart Web Technology Corporation ang nakaka-register. At kung mapag-alaman po ninyo uh, na tulad ng ginawa ng BIR ayon sa PAO ng mga genuine feel health uh, IDs po ito, uh, ano pong posibleng maging conclusion nyo tulad ba ng hinala ng komite na may mga tao sa loob na nagfa-facilitate nito? Kung, ma kung makita ko na ano na totoo po yung mga IDs, pwede po namin matrace din sa, sa ano namin kung paano siya na-transact. Individually, pwede po kasi bago sila na-employ sa smart web, baka na-require din po na smart web na naka-register na ho sila sa PhilHealth before sila ma-employ. So may possibility din po. Kung habang naka-employ naman ho sila, at doon lang po naggawa ng ID, may possibility din po na fake po itong mga to. So maganda kung magkaroon kami ng copy ng list po ng mga IDs para ma-validate po namin. Thank you po. Salamat din, uh, Doktora. And, and the committee requests uh, PhilHealth and the other agencies whose IDs miraculously appear here uh, to furnish the committee with the application forms or the online application form in the case of uh, smart web na sinabit po sa inyong opisina na mga aplikante or employer applicant na mga para sa mga ID cards na ito. Salamat, uh, Doktora. At back po to Paok, uh, you said, I, I really find it very problematic na basta-basta na lang pala tayo, by tayo, I mean, uh, Philippine government agencies, namimigay ng ID, lalo na uh, nalaman natin, nung mga nakaraang hearings pa, na basta-basta lang nagpupuslit dito sa Pilipinas yung mga magiging workers ng uh, Pogo. And these IDs uh, would legitimate their stay here in the Philippines. At ang isang matinding problema dito ay baka binibigyan natin ng identity, pati mga fugitives sa ibang bansa. I ask this question po kasi may nauna na tayong nabalitaan dyan. Ano po? Nagtatago mula sa batas sa China, saka sa Myanmar, tapos dito tumakbo. So, have there been instances po that these cards, uh, through these you were able to identify wanted persons from other uh, jurisdictions? Pwede nyo bang uh, uh, pag-usapan ito ng kahit konti? Uh, Ma'am, uh, not these cards, but yung mga uh, identities po, no mga nakuhuli namin noong nakakaraan. And then uh, they, they assume uh, fake identities and uh, names. And uh, nalalaman na lang namin na fake yung identities nila and names nila. Pag uh, dumating na po dito, ma'am, yung counterparts namin from China and other embassies. Kasi may mga database po silang dala. And then once they check on the names, hindi po yun yung sinasabi nila sa amin na hindi yan yung totoong pangalan and ito yung totoong pangalan niya. That's why, ma'am, in, uh, in our pre uh, previous raids, nakakuha po kami ng about uh, 15 fugitives from other countries. And... Uh, uh, for this recent one here in uh, Smart uh, Web, ma'am. Ngayon, ma'am, may nakuha na po kaming isa. And that's only for one embassy na nag-coordinate sa amin. Hindi pa po nag-coordinate yung uh, Chinese embassy. So our, we are expecting more uh, fugitives na makukuha po namin. So, sa pamamagitan ng ating Philippine IDs, nakakapag-assume sila ng ganito mga fake identities. Parang nakakatulong pa yung ating mga government-issued IDs, makatakas sila sa law enforcers sa kanilang mga bansa. Yeah, uh, ganun po ma'am. Kasi if not, uh, if not, if not from uh, the help of other embassies ma'am, makakalusot po sa amin dahil hindi po namin talaga alam kung ano yung totoong identity. And I also heard other accounts na um, ang Filipino, believe it or not, uh, mga kasama, no, your colleagues, Philippine birth certificates are being produced for Chinese citizens and those are being used to apply for Philippine passports. So, naiimbento yung buong identity at personal history. Ang tanong ko, di ba, bakit kailangan na maging Philippine citizens sila? So, let, let, let me show you something here. So ito po, grabe, Philippine passports for sale. Parang Philippine na nationality for sale. Parang Philippine identity for sale. I'm not asking these questions to rouse fear, but really to underscore 
a main point that pogos may be used as conduits to allow even enemy entities or forces and their spies into our country. Maybe pogos and scam hubs are not the end game. Baka ano lang sila, hakbang lang sila, patungo sa ano. Baka yung end game ay i-infiltrate yung mga borders natin at pahinain yung ating national security with our own Filipino officials as enablers. So at this point, pakinggan na Sorry, before I finally turn over to Iyakat for their uh, presentation, you said, sa, sa pagbili, pagbenta at pagbili ng Philippine passports, anong interest ang masaserve sa ganyang klaseng uh, transaction? Anong interest ma nila masaserve na magkaroon sila ng Filipino citizenship? Hindi ba pwede naman sila magtrabaho dito? Kaya nga, ayan, may alien certificate of registration pa. Uh, any speculations po ang pao? Uh, pag may bago kang identity, ma'am, may bago kang pangalan, na itatago na rin yung background mo. Eh. Whether uh, you are a criminal o meron kang atraso sa sarili mong bansa. And then, you can move around, you can do transactions, ma'am, easily. Uh, lalo kung, halimbawa, may nag-host sa yung isang bansa o yung pinuntahan mong bansa. So, yun ma'am yung uh, advantage of he having a new identity. Uh, that also gives us a headache, ma'am, sa mga intelligence work na, and operation, police operations na ginagawa namin. Once the person is, uh, nag-assume na po siya ng bagong pangalan, it's hard for us to investigate dahil uh, blank po sir ang pagsisimula. So, headache po talaga, lalo na kung uh, magkatotoo yung hinala ng ilan na baka lampas pogo na mga krimen ng human trafficking. Kung kinakasangkapan ang pogo at human trafficking para din targetin yung ating national security. So I'll leave that at that for now. But uh, so now let's please hear the president. Sorry, Senator Win. Yes, yeah, Senator Win first before Iyakat. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the topic of uh, the uh, identification, uh, we received a letter from the Bureau of Immigration, and I'm, uh, is the Bureau of Immigration here? And it was uh, And like for example, we uh, asked for information regarding the uh, suspects that were apprehended here, uh, and those suspects have guards. For example, there's this certain Chen Ying. Meron siyang nine possible match in the ACR iCard database. And then meron pang isang Chen Xin, eight possible match in the ICR iCard database. Anong ibig ko sabihin nun ito? Good afternoon, sir. Um, ibig sabihin po doon, since um, may mga kapangalan siguro yung possible match, so we will to be able to zero kung ano talaga yung record sa amin po, we would need the exact um, date and possibly the third date of birth as appearing in the passport. In other words, these two personalities have nine and eight possible matches? Marami silang ganung kapangalan? Yes po. Possible po na common name po itong Chen Ying. Yung isa lang po yung may exact match sa amin. Yung And there, yung there's, there's this other one, Liu Rulong. No record found in the ACR iCard database. Pero meron siyang card. Uh, wala po yon. Hindi yung siya re uh, registered sa database ng iCard namin. Wala siyang card? Wala po. Okay. Yun. Um, and then there's also another person, si Deng Wenlong. Uh, may possible match siya. But the petitioner is Brick Cards Technology, which is a, uh, I remember si Senator Grace po uh, made a privileged speech on Brick Cards. And Brick Cards is one of those who um, Pagcourt closed down. So in other words, this Deng Wenlong was already working in a shut down Pogo operator pero nandito siya in this uh, uh, smart web operator. So, in other words, uh, nagtatrabaho siya sa isang sinarang operator, nakalipat siya sa isang sinarang operator. 
which is um, smart web right now. And then meron dito sa uh, we have a picture na nagtrabaho rin siya sa isang sa SA Rivendell which is another shutdown um, uh, service provider. So in other words, makikita natin na yung trend, Madam Chair, na pare-pareho lang yung tao, palipat-lipat lang sila. Sinara dito, lilipat doon. Sinara ito, lilipat dito. Sinara ito, I'm sure lilipat yung iba. At saka, Sen. Sherwin, yung isa sa naka-rubber band na batch of ID cards na nakita natin, Rivendell, ang employer. So, it, and on top of that, my analysis of these nine possible names, it, one, talagang popular name siya. Two, hindi binibigay yung totoong name. Kaya pare-pareho yung name na ginagamit nila para maguluhan tayo. Diba? And when, when you issue a card, what is the proof that that person is the actual person? Uh, we require the passports po when they transact. So, pag... Uh, that is the basis ko. So, we check also kung valid or genuine yung passport before we... So, all all of this Chen Ying, nine of them, went to uh, the Bureau of Immigration to get their cards? Possible? Yes, sir. Because uh, they have ACRI cards. Na may ganyang variation or name. Possible it... kasi yung nine, hindi lang Chen Ying yung pangalan. So, may... Uh, uh, may more than changing yung pangalan. So, kaya possible match lang po. Is it also possible that uh, a, a third party gets those uh, cards for these people? Pwede bang, let's say, uh, 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 loosely, a, a fixer. Meron bang third party or a fixer na pwedeng pumunta um, at kunin lahat itong mga cards na ito? Ang pag-apply po sa atin, it's either yung applicant himself or yung company meron silang special power of attorney or accredited agent ang nagtatransact. Usually po pagka yung mga companies na marami, uh, pagkaya ng sa Pogo, accredited agent ang nag-handle. So, manpower agent? Um, no, a BI accredited agent to transact. With what the is the BI agents. accredited agent? What is an agent? It's an accreditation system po. But who is the agent? Travel agent? Travel agent po. Travel agent. So, travel agent, possible na lahat to, travel agent ang pumunta, dala-dala yung passport at binigay. So, that's that, that's allowed. That's allowed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sen. Sherwin. And uh, now we'll hear the presentation uh, of IACA on the operation that has closed down SmartWeb. You have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Senator Wynn. You, sir. Um, thank you again for giving DOJ IACA the opportunity to present before this committee on this very significant and disturbing issue of national concern. Um, this is the summary of our presentation. Um, aside from an overview on this recent operation, this operation here on, in Smart Web in Pasay, we will also briefly discuss some of the significant raids that our interagency group has conducted. So, so as to juxtapose this with what has happened here, as well as to serve as the basis for the patterns and trends that we will identify later. And then afterwards, we'll proceed to the challenges, the ways forward, and then identify policy gaps that could be um, sources, that could be basis for, um, for amendments to the human trafficking law or other laws. So let's start with the overview of, the, of, fi of five significant operations. The first operation, which we know, um, kick-started this entire aggressive campaign against illegal pogos is the Clarkson Valley operation. Um, just to um, remind everyone, this operation was led by the PNP ACG, uh, along with PAOC, as well as the DOJ. Um, Clarkson Valley was a multi-building compound. Um, it, was a, it was a complex you know, where in some of the buildings were used for the illegal pogo operation, while most of the buildings served as the residence for the for the workers, for the individuals who were found there. And we can say that, at least from the operate, from the perspective of law enforcement, officially, um, this operation confirmed the existence of scam hubs operating in the country that subject their workers to human trafficking and other abuses. In Clarkson Valley, majority of the victims were foreign nationals. In fact, the, in our view, our assessment, the Filipinos we found there were 
were utility workers and were immediately sent home. We didn't even consider them as trafficking victims. Um, most, majority, uh, maybe around 99% of the foreign national victims who were found there have already been repatriated. This is the figure as of August 1, 2023 was 1,156. In addition, the foreign nationals who remained here were either witnesses or, some, or the accused in the pending cases. Um, five of the foreign witnesses have already been repatriated as they've already finished with their testimony in the, in the case pending in court, but some more are still um, awaiting their presentation in court. Um, there is an ongoing human, case for human trafficking pending in Pampanga, but at the same time, the interagency team composed of PNP ACG, AMLC, CDC, as well as the, the Clark Task Force of the IACAT, commenced, filed money laundering charges against some individuals. I was also informed that there are other cases that may be filed against the, against the owners of these different, um, the, the, the different entities involved here. Um, and finally, we faced a lot of habeas corpus cases in the Clarkson Valley case, um, but we were able to win most of them. Um, some of them had to be released by order of the court, but this served as some kind of um, um, starting point for us to, to tweak our approaches and improve it during the next operations. Uh, and finally, in Clarkson Valley, the licenses from, of, from, of both PAGCOR and CDC for the for the POGOs involved in, in this compound have already been licensed, have, have already been cancelled. Next operation we will discuss is the operation in Las Piñas, the Hong Thai, with the, the Hong Thai POGO. This is an operation led by the PNP ACG. It is similar to Clark in the sense that it's a multi-building compound where, where some buildings were for the operations of the POGO and most buildings served as the residents for the, for the workers. Majority of the victims here were actually Filipino, and they were sent home. I think the ratio is around 60-40, you know, Filipino to foreign nationals. Um, cases, there's still an ongoing case buildup for potential human trafficking cases against some of the perpetrators identified on the site. PNP is cooperating with the um, AMLC as well as the National Task Force Against Trafficking for the potential cases. We're also informed that the licenses for, for this POCO have already been cancelled by Pankor. Um, uh, the next operation we will discuss is the Rivendell operation here in Pasay City also. This operation was led by PAOC, DOJ IACA, the DOJ Office of Cybercrime, the National Bureau of Investigation, and the DICT-CICC. This is the first of, the, of these raids that involved a single building. Uh, unlike the previous two, which involved a compound with multiple buildings, Rivendell is merely a single building. And here we discovered scams, on, uh, um, cyber scams were happening no? under, the, under the guise of POGO operations. Um, one of the significant findings here is that we, we did not find human trafficking in the Rivendell operation. And the reason for that is that the badges were not enough. For one thing, unlike the other POGO operations, the, the workers here were able to go home. And the workers, none, none so far, have really surfaced to say that they're victims of human trafficking. We didn't have any allegations of, um, of abuse in case of failure to meet their quota. So we treated it as a, as a regular uh, scam operation. Um, so there is a pending case for violation of SEC law, SEC, uh, because they were selling securities. Under, it was as if they were offering securities. There is a pending case against, I think, more than 20 Chinese nationals. But we are, we intend, there are case build up for other violations of law, such as the violation of the SIM card registration, the SIM registration act, because as in other sites, no, we discovered a significant amount in, in Rivendell, uh, 27,000 SIM cards, many of which were registered. And they also understand that the license of Rivendell, not just the Pasay Rivendell, but there were other, there were sister companies, you know, Rivendell across Metro Manila, that were also canceled by PADCOR. One observation in Rivendell is that most of the individuals found on the site were Filipino. If in, if in Las Piñas, in Hong Tai, it's 60-40, in Rivendell, it's around 75-25 or 
ang composition ng mga ng Filipino vis-a-vis -vis foreign nationals. Majority of the foreign nationals have already been deported in coordination with their embassies. And please note the difference, no? For this, we deported them because we do not consider them as trafficking victims. Unlike in Clark, because we treated them as trafficking victims, the process was repatriation. Um, the foreign nationals remaining in the Philippines are those that ha have been criminally charged and detained and those that are um, awaiting deportation. Uh, the fourth operation we'll talk about is this very recent one, SmartWeb, this very building where we are in. This was an interagency operation led by PAOC, DOJ IACAT, and PNP WCPC. Just like Rivendell, it involved a single building. Uh, and we discovered elements of both sex and labor trafficking on the, in the building. So far for the cases, five Chinese nationals and one Filipino have already been arrested for, for, and, and are facing um, charges of sex trafficking. Uh, they underwent inquest, but they chose to waive the right to, to Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code and are going through regular preliminary investigation. I understand that the first hearing now for them is scheduled on November 14. Um, at the same time, the 452 foreign nationals underwent inquest proceedings from the BI, administrative inquest, to, to deem them in violation of immigration law and to justify our custody over them. Um, PADCOR has already canceled the provisional license issued to SmartWeb. We intend to file other cases against for the SmartWeb operation. For, for instance, the, the pending case right now is for sex trafficking, but as you may know, we have several victims who surfaced and, and, and complained about labor trafficking. We, will, we, will, we are in the process of case buildup for these labor trafficking charges, which will be filed by a regular preliminary investigation. We also filed cases against the owners, incorporators, corporate officers of, the, of, the, of, the, of SmartWeb Technologies, as well as the predecessors of SmartWeb. No? I understand these are Frigo and Sichuan, as well as the owner and owner of the prop of the building and the land where we are. And we will also we intend to look into possible charges against government employees who who in, who are tasked to inspect or grant licenses to this facility. We've we've already tasked the PNP anti graft uh, no NBI anti graft division for this matter. Um, we did not include yet the issue of the the the, 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 the IDs, the IDs that have been secured. Um, we intend to include that as well in the assignment of NBI anti graft division. And finally, um, we intend to um, to initiate for future proceedings for this building, because as you may well know, under our trafficking law, the proceeds and the instruments of human trafficking shall be forfeited in favor of the state for the benefit of trafficking victims. So we will certainly, um, we will certainly um, put all our efforts, devote a lot of resources to seek the future of this building for the benefit of the state. Most of the individuals found on this building are Chinese nationals. So, so here we're going to see the deviation, of the, the, how, how, how things really change from, from establishment to establishment. Fifteen of the individuals have been identified, have been tagged as trafficking victims, and they're presently in the, in the shelter of the DSWD in Mandaluyong. And we are coordinating with the embassies for, of the other foreign nationals for their identifi identification and their possible deportation. Last operation we're going to discuss is the most recent operation that was conducted in Pabinaque City. This is an operation led by PAGCOR, PAOC, and the PNP Sovereign Police District. Um, unlike the other operations, this operation was founded, was based on in PADCOR's inspection powers as well as, uh, as, well as law enforcement's um, authority to rescue human trafficking victims. The other four operations were founded on search warrants. This is a single building. So far, two Chinese nationals have been arrested and we have rescued 16 victims of human trafficking. But, we, but this, this operation is very new. A lot of things are still happening. And we will just update the, the, the committee once we've, once we've met and, and, and collated the information that we have. Those, so those are a summary of the five 
five significant operations or five significant raids that our interagency team has conducted against illegal pogos. With that, let's proceed to our observed patterns or trends. First is, has already been mentioned by Senator Gatchelian, is that this, this issue of illegal pogos, this issue is, is not simply a human trafficking problem, it's not a cybercrime problem, it's not, a, it's not even an illegal pogo problem. It's actually an organized crime problem. And if we define organized crime as criminal activity that is planned and controlled by powerful groups at a large scale, uh, pasok to pasok siya, no? and, and in terms of the criminal activities that, that, that are involved here, uh, we've already seen you know, what kinds of activities are there. Um, human trafficking, both sex and labor variety. You have cybercrime. You have scamming. You have torture. You have illegal gambling. You have kidnapping. You have falsification of government documents. You have, you pr probably you would have smuggling. And, and, and I would think there would be some corruption of public officers involved here. Um, the structures and the operations of the POGUs that we've, we've raided, they vary. As you've seen, some of them are compounds of multiple buildings. Some of them are single buildings. But what, one thing we've noticed is that they serve as one-stop shops, no? small communities where everything is present for the, for, the, for the residents, for the workers of this POGO. But that doesn't mean that there, there are, well, wala na ibang klase. I, I, we, would, we anticipate that there are other types of operations out there. Right now, we have significant intelligence on some formerly licensed POGOs or service providers in, in very high-end office buildings in central business districts who, while no longer licensed, continue to operate as such within individual floors or individual rooms. We plan to look into that. Also, we have reports of houses in high-end subdivisions in the south, guarded subdivisions, that may serve as well as, the, that, may, that may be venue for these types of operations, or maybe just the houses of the, of the bosses of these types of operations. Um, the variety of these operations also manifests in the presence or absence of trafficking in persons. As you've seen, the, for one, for one of the operations we've raided, the Rivendell, we did not find there to be human trafficking. But for most, there is human trafficking. And that's, I think that connects back to our first point, no? that this is not a human trafficking thing. This is an organized crime thing. Because there can be so many, so many crimes that emanate from this type of activity. Um, more and more Filipinos are being found on the Pogo sites. And more and more Filipinos are actually employed as the customer service representatives. Although that that does, although here in, in, in Smart Web, it's a combination. No? In, in some floors, we found Filipinos who are working as the agents in the, in the, in the, uh, in the cybercrime operations. But there's a good number of Filipinos also who work in support services, such as the cafeteria or the, or the barbershop. More and more Chinese nationals are being, 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 being found in these POGO sites. If before there was really a good number of foreign of nationals from other, other countries, such as Vietnam, uh, Myanmar, Indonesia, for, at, at this point, the, the numbers are going down. And mostly, the, the, the people, the foreign nationals that we find in the sites are Chinese. Many of them are, and, and usually, the bosses and the supervisors are Chinese. And more and more incidences of Chinese nationals being recycled from one pogo to another. Now let's go to the challenges. Um, these are just the key challenges that we've identified. There are so many challenges that we, when, whenever we have our interagency meetings, there are so many challenges that we've identified. But this is just a this is just tip of the iceberg. Of some, these are the most significant challenges we've identified. First is, uh, is budget, because obviously these types of operations entail a significant amount of resources from the state. And it's not just for the maintenance of the facility, it's also for the, for the feeding of the individuals that we, that we, we hold. It's assistance to the victims, it's the repatriation and deportation of the, of the foreign nationals, and it's also for, for, the, for, for, for us, no? for the law enforcement officers, for, for people from PAOC, from BI, from the social workers who are here. 
we need to be the, the people in our team need to be fed and need to be maintained as well. So clearly, a significant amount of, of financing is entailed by these types of operations. Second challenge is victim identification. Before, we were very liberal in our tagging of who the victims were, and we would just let them let them go home if they were Filipinos, or we would repatriate them as if they were foreign nationals. But now we've decided to be more discerning because we've realized that this very liberal approach may serve to encourage um, some of our countrymen not to continue working in these types of facilities. Um, another challenge is communication bias and availability of interpreters, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, next challenge, a uh, very big challenge, is the availability of sufficient tools, no, su sufficient digital forensic tools. Um, the forensic tools are are usually from other countries, no, they're always from other countries, and they can be very expensive. Some of our units do have forensic tools, but we have the, the very basic level of forensic tools. What we can do usually is to extract um, the, the data from the, from the devices that we seize, but if we want those tools that not just extract, but actually provide analysis of the, of the data from the devices, these will be uh, very expensive. And, sure. and another challenge that we have is the limitations of, limitations of search warrants that we seize, because the judges are understandably very conservative, can be very conservative because there's a prohibition on general warrants. So that's why most, if not all of the search warrants we've seized are not for the entire building or the entire compound that we've raided. And we've had to resort to exceptions to the rule and search warrant to be able to seize and occupy and, 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 and search those other, those other um, parts of the building or the compound. Nevertheless, we are very confident no, that we can justify that legally if we're questioned by the, by the owners or, the, by, or by the respondents in these cases. Um, let's proceed to ways forward. Um, most significant ways forward, we'll just continue. We'll continue with what we are doing, investigation and operations against these illegal POGOs. Um, pre we've, we've identified the three best approaches to, 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 enter, you know, to enter these illegal operations. First is, of course, the, the best way, which is a search warrant application, to be able to secure a search warrant. But that's not. But we know that that's difficult. That re that requires us to have evidence to convince the judge to issue the search warrant. And it's not that easy to get the evidence because a lot of these facilities they're they're closed, they're they're very opaque, not accessible to us. But we we are able to accomplish it through the to the use of, of assets in some of the pogos, but it's not that easy to, to maintain an asset, and sometimes these assets, they, 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 they don't have full access to the entire building or the compound. Second mode of entry that we will resort to is, are the inspection powers. And there are so many agencies that have inspection powers for these facilities. We start with FADCOR, and then the LGU, and Immigration, DOLE, all of them would have some form of inspection powers, which will allow us to access these facilities. And the third way is under the human trafficking law, which is the rescue of victims of human trafficking. If we have information on trafficking victims within a particular establishment, even if that's not a POGO, law enforcement in coordination with social work with DSWD is authorized to enter that establishment and rescue the trafficking victims. So this is what we'll continue to do. No? We will continue to employ maybe one or a combination of these modes of entry to be able to, to access these POGOs and hopefully um, close them down and and find perpetrators who will be able to prosecute, prosecute and, if, and most importantly, to rescue victims of human trafficking. Um, next way forward is coordination. We just continue with coordination because that is one of the things we've identified, which is the key in our campaign against, against organized crime, against illegal POGOs. It's a coordination between the relevant government agencies. And as you can see, the most successful operations that we've had is those where DOJ, PAOC, and law enforcement has closely coordinated, as, uh, along with other, other key agencies now, we've closely coordinated to adequately prepare for the, for the raid, to adequately find legal justification for the raid, and to, to address each and every step that comes after. Because one thing that we are certain of is that it doesn't end. The moment that the raid it doesn't end. That's just the beginning. There are so many other things that they have to consider right after that. And each and every one of those things, we as a team, a coordinated team, we consider that. Uh, 
Next, next way forward is disruption strategies, which connects to our, our three modes of entry. Because we know that these types of raids, these are, these are like home runs. These are some, but these are things that we can't do all the time. So another approach that we can do is maybe just disrupt. Disrupt these, disrupt these um, illegal pogos, maybe through inspections, maybe through, 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 through communication. And hopefully, hopefully that along with the raids, that would create a very significant disincentive for them. That would make it very expensive for them to maintain their operation here in the Philippines and they just pack up and leave. Um, next is we continue to build capacity. Because one thing we have to admit, this is, see Senator Lisa Nismal Xavier, this is a black swan. This is something that, that we, never, we never saw and this, this is something that's out, out of, not, in the, not in the book. And so we have, to, we have to think outside the box. So a lot of the things we are figuring out as we go. But it's good that we regularly coordinate with each other because we, we build up on that. We improve each other. And hopefully in the course of that, we improve our capacity. And last is policy reform, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. Um, this, is our, this is our last slide, which, are, which is an identification of the policy gaps that, that can be, that can be um, part of amendments to the anti-trafficking law and other laws as well. Um, can we go to the next slide? Okay. Uh, again, this is just a, a key, you know, key policy gaps that we've identified. There are so many more. And we hope that when the time comes that the Senate and House of Representatives does deliberate on amendments to the human trafficking law, as well as other laws, we'll be given the opportunity to sit down with the team and, and propose all these different amendments. The first policy gap has to do with the non-punishment principle vis-a-vis -vis this new trend on forced criminality. Because one thing we know is that there's this general rule very fundamental rule in human trafficking, in anti-human trafficking law, that victims of human trafficking, they are not liable for criminal activities for any, 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 any acts that they do as trafficking victims. But this trend of forced criminality, you know, where, where victims are being forced to, to do criminal acts, such as scamming, it's proven to be quite a challenge to this basic principle of non-criminality. That's why, and and what we've done of giving the tag of trafficking victim to the individuals that we find in these establishments. So one thing that we hope can come out of the, of the, the, of the amendments to the trafficking law is have, a more, have more definite standards, have clearer standards on how we can identify who are victims of human trafficking. Uh, next, two, next two policy gaps are, um, are related. Uh, this has to do with, with for feature of the, of the assets that we are able to seize. As you may know, in in a lot of the a lot of the hubs we've raided, a significant amount of, of cash was seized. In in Clark, I think around 190 million pesos was seized. In in Las Piñas, I think around 120. And in Pasay, Rivendell, around seven. Right now, we anticipate we anticipate cash to be seized as well when we secure the break open order from the from the vaults that are present in this in this building. We hope to be able to use the money seized sooner sooner um, for the benefit of the female trafficking victims. Rather, rather than the state being the one shelling out the money for the maintenance of the victims, as well as their repatriation or even deportation if they're not victims, we hope to be able to be in a position to use the money that we seize. Um, next policy gap has to do with the justification of the takeover of the facility. Um, as you've seen from all the significant raids we conducted, one thing that we do right after is we commandeer the facility, whether that's a compound or a building. And the reason why we do that is we do not have enough shelters to house these hundreds or thousands of indiv individuals that we chance upon in the facility. So what we do is we improvise. Um, of course, we can justify that on the basis of police power, on the basis that this is a crime scene, but we'd rather have more specific uh, provision of law to allow us to be able to do that. And last point, that last policy gap that we'll propose, although I did not put it here, has to do with the concern on search warrants. As you know, um, because of the prohibition on general warrants, the judges who, who grant us warrants tend to be very specific on the coverage of the warrant. 
but we are all aware that a lot of the POG hubs that we see are one-stop shop, single integrated units. So we hope to introduce this concept of a trafficking hub or trafficking center in legislation to allow us to, to give the judges basis for a warrant that is that is much broader, for a warrant that would cover the entire building or the entire compound. So, so with that, um, Your Honors, we end our presentation. Um, we hope, and again, we, we are very thankful that this committee has put this significant issue on, on the spotlight. Because one thing that we all admit in the interagency group, that the attention that this issue has been given has been very helpful to us in our, in our fight to address the problem of illegal pogos. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yusekti, at sa buong iyakat. Napaka-informative po talaga um, in terms of the uh, trends uh, and patterns across the five uh, anti-pogo uh, operations uh, so far uh, narrated. Uh, na significant po yung uh, pag-affirm nyo na organized criminal activity talaga ito. And therefore, uh, ibig sabihin, yung ating response has to be even more and more organized. Kaya instructive din po sa komite uh, your detailing of the challenges facing our uh, law enforcement agencies. Uh, very well noted and some of these are very timely, lalo na ongoing ang uh, aming mga budget plenaries sa Senado. And uh, very instructive din, helpful yung pagtukoy nyo ng mga uh, policy gaps which for one, the committee will certainly use in drafting the committee report for the consideration of the committee members' findings and recommendations. Uh, dahil nga, we have been conducting these, this investigation for the past three years na pala. Uh, in, and uh, we want to really uh, strengthen uh, our Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act and the other laws keep a pace with our law enforcement agencies kasi kayo rin uh, nag adjust nag evolve din. Dahil itong criminal activity ay patuloy na nag evolve o nag-mutate, nag, nag parang virus, and are clearly posing more and more uh, challenges uh, to our country and even to our government. Without prejudice to uh, follow-up questions sa IACAT presentation and other questions, dumating na uh, daw ang kinatawa ng BIR Attorney Ralbert Tinayan. So could I just ask... Uh, Ay ma, Tibayan po. Tibayan. Ay yes, yes, Attorney MC. Tibayan. I'm so sorry, Attorney Tibayan. Salamat po. Just a couple of quick questions kanina po halos sa simula ng hearing. Pinag-usapan yung mga IDs. Kung genuine ba yan, kung fake ba yan na nakukuha uh, ng mga Chinese Pogo employees. Uh, pwede po bang i-confirm kung yung mga BIR cards na halimbawa nasa possession ngayon ng PAOK at tinignan namin ni na censure wing kanina, legitimate ba uh, ang mga BIR cards na ito? Ma'am, with a simple eye test, medyo mahirap ma-determine if legitimate or hindi. But what we can do is, um, pwede namin isa-isahin yung TIN number if it really is registered with the BIR po. And then tulad ng hiningi ng komite sa PhilHealth, could the BIR please submit the application documents that were submitted? If any were submitted, uh, please submit copies to the uh, to the committee. We'll make that request, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney. Yes, and sure. Quick follow-up question to the BIR. How come the TIN numbers are not, that, that the cards do not have pictures? Um, sir, yung in-issue talaga namin, walang photo, and then si taxpayer na yung maglalagay. But dapat salita na yan. Yes. Alam nyo, bata pa ako, ganyan na yung nangyayari. And uh, uh, parang primitive, that's a primitive uh, way of issuing cards. It's about time that BIR changed that policy already and issue actual cards because papel lang yan eh. Diba? Papel lang yan. Actually, lahat tayo meron yan. Eh. Papel lang yan. In fact, most often yan na nababasa yan sa wallet, nasisira yan. So, that's already changed that antiquated 
siguro hindi ko pa pinapanganak, ganyan na yan. Eh. So, so, so uh, let's change that already. Because obviously, it's being used for criminal activities. And BIR is now embroiled in, in, in such. No? So I recommend, uh, I recommend to the BIR and, and tell the commissioner that let's already change that policy. Let's have a in totoong card, no? in plastic with pictures, and before BIR issues it, dapat may picture na para alam na natin siya talaga yun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, San Sherwin. Thank you, Attorney Tibayan. Um, follow up pa rin po dun sa comprehensive presentation ng IACAT, particularly yung huling, yung ikalimang uh, operations na tinalakay nyo, yung sa Paranaque. Uh, I firmly believe that the prostituted women there were victims of human trafficking. Uh, yung characterization ba na yun, sineshare din po ng IACAT, uh, for that matter, ng PAOC at saka yung PNP, Women and Children Protection uh, Desk? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. We, we, we identified, I think, 14, 14 victims of human trafficking in that site. So 16. 16 possible victims of human trafficking in that site. And these victims are the prostituted women. Thank you for that, Yusek. Tapos nakikita na natin ngayon sa mga balita na these scam hubs have begun sprouting even outside the NCR, even outside uh, Clark, no? uh, Cebu, Iloilo, at iba pa. Can you comment on that emerging trend, that direction or pattern? Hindi ba pag totoo yan at magpatuloy pa yan, lumawak pa yan, mas mahihirapan po tayong itrack at i-crack down on ito. Uh, Madam Chair, we believe it makes sense for them to move somewhere else because they're feeling the heat here. No? Uh, may may init na talaga dito sa NCR at sa mga nearby provinces. At na-confirm namin yun dun sa na-rescue na ng mga 30 plus Vietnamese and Chinese nationals. They were rescued just the day after we raided Smart Web. They were rescued in, in the domestic, in, in Naia Terminal 2, taking a domestic flight from Manila to Cebu. And ang kwento doon, sino doon mismo lumapit sa, I think, airport security or sa OTS. Sinabi, in, in English pa, linigay nila sa cellphone nila na, please, please help us, ganun. At dahil nga doon, umaksyon yung mga tao sa airport, binifer doon sa, sa ABSECOM. Tapos we refer dun sa NAIA Task Force, no, kay Prosecutor Jinky. And, and one of the things we were able to, to, to elicit from the victims is that they were headed to Cebu. Bukod sa Cebu, bukod sa Iloilo, may napag-aalaman ba kayong iba pang mga destination or uh, targeted or potential expansion areas ng mga POGO uh, hubs na ito or to, to begin using yung proposed term nyo, trap, trafficking hubs or trafficking centers na attended by uh, various other criminal activities? Um, some of the victims that we rescued here, um, they said that they came from Cagayan de Oro. They came from CDO, another another Pogo in CDO. And then there are the reports that some are going to Region 2. Uh, maybe say, you say Cruz, can, yeah, up north, you, they're going up north. Yes, please, you said Cruz. Um, um, uh, uh, we've been receiving uh, intel info as to the POGO operations up north, ma'am. But uh, siguro, ma'am, I'll just give you the report, ma'am, kasi mama, yung iba, ma'am, uh, you know, work out na po natin. But uh, meron talaga, ma'am. Okay. Very worrying po talaga. The committee shares uh, the worry of IACAT and the PAOC and uh, uh, will uh, be grateful to be kept updated para makasabay din po yung aming uh, legislative work dito. Uh, questions now also for the NAIA, TIFAT, na binanggit kanina, and perhaps also the Bureau of Immigration again. Uh, pwede niyo po bang bigyan ng sense yung komite ng scale ng problemang ito based din sa trend sa inbound at sa ka-outbound flows ng mga suspected or established na trafficking victims uh, at least over the the duration of the past five operations discussed. Yes, uh, please, Attorney Santos. Thank you, ma'am. For the Bureau of Immigration, um, tinignan nun namin ang entry ng mga subjects na nakita dito, ang mga foreigners. 
they came in as uh, temporary visitors or tourists. So, papasok sila bilang temporary visitors o kaya tourists, pero kalaunan, they end up and then they stay in these uh, trafficking hubs or trafficking centers. Ito po ba ay uh, related or hiwalay na phenomenon dun sa una naming at medyo matagal na inimbestigahan na pastilya scam? Uh, hindi ko po masabi. But, but um, even for non- for foreigners na hindi ko naman dit na nasa scam, ano, uh, ganitong klaseng problema, usually naman no, talaga ang mga foreigners sa atin humadating as temporary visitors sa Malaysia. And what does the BI notice about uh, outbound flows? Um, wala ako akong data right now, but we can uh, check on that one. Right. Salamat, uh, Attorney Santos. And uh, gaya ng napag-usapan kanina uh, with the PAOC, uh, it's also come to our attention na some of those entering the country are actually uh, fugitives from other jurisdictions. So paano mas mahusay itong matatrack, uh, in particular, uh, ng BI? Uh, salamat po. Um, yung mga fugitives po, ang pansin ho namin, when they arrive here, hindi pa ho sila, as far as the Philippine government is concerned, aware na fugitive sila. So nalalaman ho natin na fugitive sila kasi pag nandito na ho sila, saka tayo na inform ng embassy nila, or kaya nito, pagka na-check na sa raid, sasabihin ng embassy nila, fugitive nila yan. So si Commissioner Tansinko po has been uh, speaking with counterpart embassies to request, uh, to propose, uh, magmarandom of agreement with them na mag-regularly magbigay sila ng list ng kanilang fugitives para ma-prevent na po pumasok sila dito. Opo, that would uh, also make it easier for our law enforcement agencies na kung meron namang record, criminal record at that, itong mga inbound temporary visitors or tourists, meron, tama, tama si Com Tansinko, uh, may may regular na pag-update na mula sa counterparts ng BI sa mga bansa nila para hindi na makalusot sa BI, hindi na maging sakit ng ulo pa ng ating mga law enforcement agencies dito, even in relation to the misuse of government-issued uh, IDs. So, uh, salamat po para doon. And, and by the way, have there been any successful prosecutions of BI officials uh, or employees, but especially of BI officials, for abetting the entry of uh, trafficked foreign nationals and the exit of Filipino nationals bound for human trafficking abroad? Opo, uh, regular naman po yung uh, mga uh, cases, admin cases, and sometimes uh, criminal cases against uh, our employees na nagkakaguno ng mga ganitong issue. Opo, meron na po laban sa mga employees, pero wala pa po laban sa NEBI officials. Meron din po ba? especially uh, as a as a result of the pastillas investigations yeah. by this committee and also parallel by our law enforcement and investigations sa, sa ang from the all right ano kulang pa ano as a object lesson dahil nagpapatuloy pa rin yung ganitong mga trends yung ganitong mga patterns and hopefully not pero possibly still with the collusion of some insiders so We'll have to keep, uh, keep the heat up also on that front. Uh, para naman po sa naia TFAT, sino nga po yung ating... Yes, ma'am. Attorney Delgado, do I read your name right, ma'am? Attorney Dedumo. Uh, on the part of the task force uh, against trafficking ng, ng NAIA, pag domestic flights po, minomonitor din po ba? Uh, uh, halimbawa, just to use the example na yung mga Vietnamese trafficking victims, buti na lang nakapaghingi ng tulong sa authorities natin, but they were actually uh, on a domestic flight from Manila to Cebu at that time. Kasi nga, nakikita natin, bumabiyahe sila from 
point in the Philippines to another point in the Philippines. Cebu man yan, Iloilo, etc. Uh, hindi man ito covered ng BI dahil domestic ano na, transfer, pero covered po ba ng inyong TFAT? Uh, good morning, Madam Senator. Good morning, everyone. Um, ang NAIA Task Force po ay coordinating anti-human trafficking efforts sa NAIA terminals, uh, international departures. But with the emerging trends, uh, we decided, although nagiging international, uh, domestic na po yung Terminal 2, um, hindi po kami umalis doon, we stayed. And we continued monitoring and conducting surveillance po sa airport. Kaya po yung mention po ni Yusek kanina na may na-rescue na Vietnamese uh, along with three Chinese. Um, our NAIA task force uh, agents immediately um, responded to the call of the PNP FCU. So, nandun po agad yung ating uh, mga IACAT staff na nag-assist po. Kaya po, um, Nagkaroon po ng coordination, um, not only with the LEAS but also with the SWT and also with our uh, IACAT staff or operation center uh, for the shelter. And then we endorse it to the NBI, International Airport Investigation Division, because NBI has the primary jurisdiction for human trafficking at the airports. So in this case, uh, Madam Senator, we are thankful for this opportunity to air out also our concern that um, we have also our uh, Filipino nationals uh, being victims abroad. Um, we have cases of repatriated uh, Filipino victims um, here uh, being assisted by the IACA task force in, in the airport, the IACA task force and also processed by the DMW or the Department of Migrant Workers. So um, so it's not only uh, happening abroad, of course, as being the subject of this inquiry, but also here. But um, as far as the NEA Task Force is concerned, um, we have encountered uh, cases wherein um, the returning uh, OFWs uh, were being offloaded by the BI, the iProbes, it's now iProbes, and uh, they are grateful and thankful that they were offloaded by the immigration officers because later they came to know that uh, there is danger abroad. And uh, based on our interview, because we are assisting them in our office, um, they, um, were, they were hired or recruited through Facebook, and um, some met somewhere uh, near the airport in some establishments and turned over fraudulent documents. So the reason why BI also offloaded those passengers, they presented uh, fraudulent documents and also um, gave inconsistent statements. So that's why BI and IACAT, along with our LEAS, this WD, and partners there, also with PAOC, uh, we are consistently and continuously coordinating to protect our Philippine nationals from being trafficked abroad. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much also, uh, Attorney De Dumo. And mabuti nga, na, nag-desisyon kayo manatili dun sa Terminal 2 dahil nga kahit naging domestic terminal na rin siya, meron pa ngang mga international flights served uh, out of there. Pero yung pananatili nyo rin po sa Terminal 2, I hope uh, it also means there's a possibility na um, organizationally, imo-monitor nyo na rin po yung mga domestic flights, which are actually also one or a few legs of the uh, international human trafficking, like in, in that example uh, uh, we discussed. I hope you can comment on that a, a little later in the hearing, but I'd like to uh, turn over first to Sen. Sherwin now for his questions. I'm sure if I can jump to a, a different uh, topic. Sure, Paul. We'll just permission. return to, yes, na iya uh, uh, TFAT. Yeah, with your Please permission, proceed. Madam Chair, because I was uh, processing the briefing from uh, uh, Ayaka. I want to ask uh, Yusef Cruz, um, how come all of a sudden the Philippines became the favorites of Chinese syndicates? 
But all of a sudden, I, I've been in government for 23 years, but this is the first time that I've noticed that we became the favorite playing ground, playground of Chinese syndicates. And these are not ordinary syndicates. No, these are not just the ones in Binondo. No, these are no, these are people capable of torturing, cutting fingers off their victims, tasering, kanina nakita natin, tasering their victims. Nakita natin yung bat doon. Walang sinabi po yung mga fraternity dito. No, yung fraternity dito naging bata eh. No? In kanila yung bat, warak na warak, kakapalo. These are not ordinary people. These are animals. No, how come it became, all of a sudden, the Philippines became their favorite playground? Um, sa observation lang po, uh, Madam Chair, uh, lagi po silang makakalusot eh. Uh, parang there is always a way out for them once na may pinasok silang gulo. Like, for example, uh, cases of physical injuries na reglo nila eh. Uh, cases of, uh, uh, hindi ko naman ma'am nila lahat, no? but uh, there were reported kidnappings na even the reports that uh, you've seen, ma'am, dito sa isang kwarto, uh, we consider them sold pag na, na i-soli na yung victim. In some reports, uh, ang remarks sa report is sold, but ang, ang totoong nangyari, sinoli lang po yung victim. What happened, ma'am? doon sa mga suspects. They just uh, get away doon sa crime na ginawa nila, yung pag-kidnap nila, and then pag-torture doon sa tao. And uh, these are sad stories, ma'am, but uh, these are happening. And uh, even uh, in uh, the registration of the cars, luxury cars for that matter, ma'am, like yung mga Alphard na yan and other luxury cars na nandito, it's not in the name of a Filipino person, ma'am. It's now in the name of a Chinese person. So, uh, para sa akin lang, ma'am, this is my opinion. Uh, it's easy for them to purchase now lands, purchase properties here, even using yung, uh, I don't know kung Pilipino na sila o Chinese pa rin sila. So, uh, that is quite easy for them. And even yung crimes na ginagawa nila, parang they can easily get off the hook doon sa mga crimes na ginagamit nila, na ginagawa nila. So, uh, kaya para sa kanila, this is a heaven. Parang, uh, ito yung magandang playground para sa kanila. Observation ko lang po yun, um, not, not really what's really happening here. But uh, my own You said what opened the door. There must be a door that opened for them. Because the Philippines, anyone naman, eh, even before, pwede naman sila pumunta dito, pwede naman sila mag... Know, or do all of these things. But why in the last one, two, three, four, five years? It was recently long. In fact, it just intensified in the last two years. Yes. So what opened? I'm just trying to process what became the attraction. The, all of a sudden, Philippines became, Uy, ganda dito ah. Dito natin gawin na itong mga torture natin. Ah. What, what gave them that, that, uh, that, that idea to come here to the Philippines? Uh, sa I mean, organized crime is nothing new. It's been yes. happening in China for many, many decades. But what? Why now? Uh, sa tingin ko, sir, medyo maluwag po tayo, sir. I, I would... Uh,